and I'm the Senior Director for the Center for Advising and Core Experience, which we also refer to as CASE. So you'll hear that quite a bit, uh, that, that term tossed around. And we serve as the primary academic advisors for students in their first year. So really you know, in the fall semester and the spring semester of your first year. And in your second year, we will hand you off to a faculty advisor in your major if you have chosen a major. And we'll talk a little bit about that shortly. Um, but we are here throughout your time at Flagler um, for any questions or needs or backup advising or just kind of as a one-stop shop if you need help with something. Um, we, we also work with transfer students as they are joining Flagler. So if we have any transfer students, we're excited to see you here. Um, we work with you during the enrollment period and then we hand you off to a faculty advisor a little bit earlier. So kind of right after you start your first semester. But again, we're here throughout your time at Flagler. Um, we, I do like to, to say that we're a one-stop shop. Our offices are on the third floor of the library. We're available via email. Um, we are available via Zoom. We're kind of here for anything that you might need. Um, and if you ever have a question and you're not sure where to go, you can always come see us in the library. Um, and I've got my slides up here. I have to remember to change slides and talk. So it's like talking oh, between gum. Um, so I think that I probably talk a lot of a bit of a lot about this stuff, but um, one of the things I also want to emphasize is that you know, advising is, is personalized. We want to get to know you and your goals, and we want to, to build um, a plan that works for you and you'll get to know your advisor pretty well but we want you to to you know learn all of our faces and names because there may be a time when you need help with something and your advisor is on vacation or not here we're all here to help you we can all answer your questions we work as a team um, so just know that you can come see any of us at any time and um, you know, again, we're we're here to help you not just with academic questions, but kind of anything that you might need. Uh, we work really closely with every office on campus: um, financial aid, career development center, student affairs, residence life. Um, you know, you name it. So again, we can support you and help you develop a plan that is um, really works for you and that is uh, unique to to you and your goals and your plans. The most important thing is, you know, who is your advisor? Um, so I'm going to let our folks introduce themselves. And, and we have one advisor who is on vacation today. So we'll, um, we'll talk a little bit about her. But Dr. Thweet, why don't you take it over and, and say hi? Oh, hi, everyone. I'm, I'm Dr. Thweet. I'm not as scary as my picture on the slide makes me look, although those glasses are really cool. I'm very proud of them. Um, different ones today. Um, I'm the uh, academic advisor for all the majors in the School of Humanities and Sciences, and we'll talk about what majors fall under which school in just a moment. Um, but uh, like Ms. Dawson said, we work really closely with offices across campus and also work really closely together. So if you have a major that falls in the School of Humanities and Sciences, but maybe your minor is in the School of Business and Education and Math, um, that's cool because Sarah Upchurch is literally right next door. So um, we'll talk about you um, and make sure that we work together to get you what you need. Michael, it's over to you. Hello, everyone. My name is Michael Morty. I am the newest academic advisor in the case office. I am the advisor for the School of Creative Arts and Letters. So I am here to support you as much as possible. So if you need anything, any assistance from me or any questions, just stop by my office and come say hi. And Ms. Sarah Upchurch is our advisor for the School of Business Education and Mathematics. Um, and she is she's also a Flagler graduate, so we have uh, she can answer questions kind of from both sides of the house as a staff member um, and um, and as an, an, a former student. All of us also teach in some capacity in um, we all teach first year seminar. Um, we teach in other departments on campus so we can um, kind of give you an insight into the, the classroom experience here at Flagler. Um, and I work, I should also have added this before, but I work with our um, discovery majors, which are our majors, our students that have not yet declared a major, or for students who are just kind of on the fence. Um, it's very common, most students will change their major at least once. So I, I like to think that you're all discovery or undecided majors 
But at any point, if you want to, to kind of officially live in that undeclared space, um, I will be your case advisor during that period, whenever it happens. Let's see, so if you're not sure which school you're in, this is this is the breakdown. Um, and I will say a lot of students, as I think everyone has mentioned, double major or major and minor. And we all know um, a little bit or a lot about each other's schools and majors and work together. So don't worry if you are double majoring, we can still help you answer any questions you have. Um, or if you're interested in double majoring or minoring, we can make sure that you have those questions answered for you. Um, so, but this is kind of the breakdown of the different schools uh, and where they live. Um, Dr. Thweet, Mr. Morty, do y'all have anything additional to add you know, kind of up to this point? who we are and what we do. Did I did I miss anything important? Um, just if you're not sure which case advisor is your advisor, um, just find your major in this list somewhere, or at least find the major that you put on your application. <laughs> um, the major that we have on record for you, find that major in this list and match us up. So I'm the, the middle column, Humanities and Sciences, Sarah Upchurch is Business Education Math, and Michael's Creative Arts and Letters. And Jill, I think the discovery program slide is maybe the next one. So um, if you're one of those folks, um, Jill will be your case advisor. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's And also, we probably have been emailing you. So if you're not sure who your case advisor is, check your email. Um, look for a message from one of us. And, and you can also email us as well if you're not sure. But that's me. Yeah. So. You know, again, I, it's really common for students to, to change their major and, and to have some uncertainty. Um, and I think most of the time that that's a really good thing. You're going to come to Flagler and you're going to take these really cool courses and meet people and have these incredible experiences that are going to get your mind churning. And, you know, I, it, I will say it, we have some students who every time they, they have a great day in class, they have a light bulb moment, they come and they say, I want to change my major. Um, which is awesome. Like that means that, you know, we want you to be excited about what you're learning. Um, and there's a lot of different ways that students get to, you know, their final decision about their major and minor. We'll make sure that you have a plan and that you have that decision made in plenty of time. But just know that you also have some time to, to be uncertain. You have some time to explore. You have some time to take classes that are not checking a box in a major. Um, you know, you, there are also other resources on campus to help you. And this is this is a really fun thing um, for, for me to work with students on. I love helping students discover um, how their interests and their passions and their strengths and their goals and all of that align. And we have some incredible programs here. And sometimes there are, well, I say most of the time, there are majors or minors um, and careers that we can connect students with that you've maybe never heard of um, that or that may you may not know exactly what they are so be open to that um, don't let that stress you out if you are feeling that uncertainty about your major um, this is one of the things that we're we're here to help you with and it's 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 really a lot of fun to help you get there so um, just if you if you want to talk about that at any point you can contact me all right, so I'll hand it over to Dr. Thweet now. Okay, so um, so now what? Um, here's some really practical things that we want you to be already doing, like starting now. Um, the very first most important thing for you, um, even starting right now, is to get used to um, checking in on myflagler.edu. Um, this is your kind of your information hub, all the important stuff um, is going to be here somewhere on myflagler.edu. The wonderful thing here is that we have just one username, one password across all Flagler related platforms. So the username and password that you use for my Flagler is the same for your email, is the same for Saints Connect once you get on campus and need to use that for your co-curriculars, which we'll explain a little bit more about in a moment. Um, but whatever it is, it's the same username, same password. So on my Flagler, when you log in, right there on the home page, um, you will find your schedule for the fall. Just scroll down a little bit right there somewhere in the middle, it will say something like my course schedule, 
this little section. And if you have a course schedule, it will just magically appear there. If you do not have a schedule that has magically appeared there yet, don't panic. Um, we are working on it. Um, we may be waiting for you to do some things, in which case you should do those things. Um, or you may be waiting on us, um, but we're working on it, okay? Um, so when you have a schedule, it will show up right there. When there's a change to your schedule, um, it will show up um, in the system right there. Um, you can find your unofficial transcript on myflagler.edu anytime you want. Um, you will find your tuition, your fees, your student accounts information, your residence life information. It's all there. Um, so myflagler.edu is your friend. The other thing we want you to really take seriously and remember, and I'm going to quote our, our absent colleague, Sarah Upchurch, if there's only one thing that you remember out of all the words that we say to you today, um, we want you to remember this. Check your Flagler email. Um, don't just check your email. Check your Flagler email. And don't just check your Flagler email. Read it. And don't just read it like sometimes. Read it like every day. Um, check your Flagler email every day, for real, seriously, for real. Um, that is where all the official communication from our office about your schedule, about whatever else we need to communicate with you about, that's going to go to Flagler email. The same for residence life, student accounts, financial aid. Every office on campus is going to communicate with you through that Flagler email account. For one thing, that's just consistency, but also they're like legal things around um, protecting your information. Um, and this is one way that we are careful to be accountable for how we treat your private academic personal information. So we will not be using your Gmail account um, unless we've been emailing you for months and you're not responding and we get desperate and start hunting you. Um, please don't make us do that. Um, so check your Flagler email every day. All right, so what is the typical first year schedule for you guys? So most first year students will either take an English course. So this will appear in your schedule as English 152, English 142, or English 172. You will also take a math course. Um, we have different classes. We have essentials of mathematics, um, statistics, um, pre-calc for you guys. You will also be taking your first year seminar course. Um, we will go more in depth into this class, what this class is structured as. Um, I'm really excited for this class because I'll be teaching it for the first time this year. So woo, let's go. Um, also a class for your major, your minors. So some of you guys will see a class called Come 101, um, Come 208, Come 218, I believe. I'm still learning the courses. Um, and a general education class for your major. Um, also, when you get your schedule, you also receive an email from us um, giving you information on how to log in. I think Dr. Twee mentioned how to get onto my Flagler and we'll give you some instructions on how to view your schedule. And when you get your schedule, please do not make an adjustment to your schedule without talking to us, um, just to make sure that everything is correct and right. We don't want you changing or adding classes that you do not need to your schedule. Um, we are available this summer to um, by appointment to answer any questions or um, talk about your schedule and see how we can basically make your schedule fit for you. Yeah, and you know, sometimes there we want you to be excited about your schedule. So this is why we want you to have an opportunity con to connect with us. But some some classes are full, and and we don't want you to drop something and not be able to get back into it. So just connect with us first. But um, you know, if we can make an adjustment in some way or explain something, we will yeah, absolutely. Okay. So this is this is pretty common. We've been we've been having a lot of these conversations recently. Um, Dr. Thweet, you want to talk a little bit about? I know you've been looking at a lot of Psych 101 credits coming in. So yes, indeed. So if you're somebody who um, has taken some adv advanced placement exams, IB, ACE credits, or you've done some dual enrollment, and you have um, 
some college credit that you've earned that you would like to um, show up um, on your Flagler transcript so that we don't inadvertently put you back in that same course. And this is really common with Psych 101 and psychology is one of the majors in the School of Humanities and Sciences. So I see a lot of Psych 101 credit come through. Um, if you want credit for that, you've got to tell us. Um, we don't automatically know. I wish we did, but I don't have magical powers. So what we need for you to do, this is your action item, um, double check and make sure that you have um, gotten an official score report or an official um, college transcript from your dual enrollment college sent to our registrar's office. Until those official transcripts or score reports are sent to our registrar, we just do not know um, that you have done this. We would love for you to have credit for the work that you've done. We absolutely want to award that, um, but we need those official score reports and transcripts. Um, if you think you've had that sent, um, but you wanna double check and make sure, here's an easy way to do it. So um, log into My Flagler with that username and password, click on the academics tab, and just scroll down that page until you see the words unofficial transcript. Click on that and it will open up a new page and it will show you what we currently have on record for you at Flagler College. If you are expecting to see a whole long list of things and you see nothing, that is your clue that you need to go back and have something sent or resent to our registrar so that we can get that processed and in our system. Once that's in the system, our, our, our system will recognize, right, that you've taken Psych 101 and you um, are able to officially enroll in that next level psychology class, Psychology 210. Um, but before our system recognizes that, I can't add you to Psych 210 without sort of special help from the registrar. Um, so it's, and of course you still eventually need to do this step anyway. So double check your unofficial transcript. If you're expecting to see things there and you don't see them, your action item is to double check that you've got everything on its way to us that should be on its way to us. General education. So one of the things I, um, I'll, I'll reiterate, and I say this to, to first year students a lot, we're throwing a lot of information at you um, and that not just us, but yeah, we know you're getting it from residence life, from, from student accounts, financial aid, there's a lot to keep track of. And you know, one of our goals um, right now as we're working with you, we wanna get you here in the fall. We wanna get you a schedule that starts you down a path um, that, that gets you on the track that you need uh, for your major, for your minor, you know, to get you introduced to, to Flagler. Um, and then, then when you get here in the fall, there's time to come sit with us and, and look at your academic plan in detail, because we don't want you to be surprised. We want you to see the big picture. And so know that if we're throwing terms at you, and if there's a lot to keep track of, there will, you will be kind of guided through this in, in multiple ways, in multiple venues. Um, in first year seminar, meeting with your advisor and all of these different places. So it's okay if, if you're kind of just taking it all in um, and you know, you're know you're, you're struggling to see the big picture, um, that's what we're here for. And, and we'll have a chance to meet with you in the fall one-on-one -on -one to do this. Um, again, everything is individual. Uh, we wanna treat you as, as you know, the individuals that you are. And this means creating a plan that, that is unique for you. Um, so general education, is uh, something that all students will take no matter their their major. Um, I see a question just came in that, that hits right on, on the nail on something I was about to say, which is if you are entering with your AA, an Associate of Arts degree, which sometimes students will earn at a community college or a state college before arriving, general education is, is completed. Um, that's pretty common with transfer students, and it's even it's becoming more and more common with first year students. So again, if that's you, um, let make sure your advisor knows that you're entering with your AA because that will um, impact your your schedule for fall and impact your academic plan. Um, you know, and and if you if you're like I have no idea what an AA or Associate of Arts is, then you probably aren't in that population, and you're fine. You don't need to worry about it. Um, but otherwise, students will complete 
general education classes. Um, these are part of what is fantastic about going to a liberal arts college like Flagler. You're going to get this broad introduction to a, a lot of skills and a lot of knowledge. You're going to communicate well. You're going to know some history. You're going to understand different cultures. Um, you're going to be able to understand statistical information and, and do some uh, additional math at the, at the basic level, like algebra or geometry. You're going, to, um, you're going to be a great public speaker. You're going to understand natural sciences. Um, so you're going to get an introduction to all of these different things that are going to give you a foundation, not just for your major, but I, I think for your, the rest of your life. Um, and then we also have some unique classes that we are piloting this fall. Uh, maybe I'll turn it over to, to Dr. Sweet to, to talk a little bit about those and, and anything else that y'all want to add about general education. Yeah, um, I'll talk about the, the pilot courses in a second, but one thing that might be helpful to realize about the structure of our general education courses is that many of those also function as the introductory courses to, to our various majors. And so if you're someone who is in that kind of undecided category, whether or not you're sort of officially undecided or you're unofficially undecided, which is a lot of people, um, part of what Jen Ed actually does for you is give you um, a reason to explore a whole lot of other types of things so you're taking that um, first course in your major, but you may also be taking a course in say the creative expression category of gen ed. Um, and it may be that through that course, whether it's um, intro to media or um, visual culture, which is one of my favorite courses in that category, it may be that you discover you just really love that stuff and that opens up a whole new pathway for you. Um, intellectually, academically, maybe even career-wise, eventually, maybe that becomes a minor, maybe you switch your major. Um, so Gen Ed is partly, um, you know, these, these different areas of knowledge that we think, okay, a well-rounded citizen of the world should know something about all these different things, but it also just opens the door for you to do a little bit of intellectual exploration, um, which is one of my favorite things about it. So these special courses that um, Jill referred to um, as our pilot courses, we're, we're shifting a little bit of how we're structuring general education. Um, and we're, we're referring to that as core. So I'm use that word a lot in a second. Um, so in the sort of newly structured general ed, which we're calling the core, we're, um, we're, we're running as a, a first step um, a handful of courses that have a special course designation of COR, which stands for core. Um, so some of you may have one of these on your schedule, um, maybe core 181, core 163, you may have something like that. Um, these are courses that are meant to do the same thing that we've been talking about, um, give you a chance to intellectually explore interesting ideas um, in different disciplines. And these core pilot courses um, are our first attempt to run these new versions of our gen ed and just see how it goes. So if you're in one of those, um, good. Um, we, wanna, we wanna know back from you, um, how was it? How did it go? What did you love about it? Um, what worked? So um, core 181, for example, is living in a digital world. That's going to explore um, questions like artificial intelligence, how is that going to change things in the near future? Are we really going to have things like self-driving cars, you guys? If we do, will that be great? <laughs> or will that be sort of a whole new package of disasters? Um, is thinking through not just the possibility of that, but what are the ethics around these things that we think might be possible? Um, should we be reaching for those things? And if so, how? So it's sort of a philosophical, ethical exploration of the possibilities of AI in the future. Um, Core 163 is titled From Adam to the Apocalypse. Um, the subtitle is Reading the Bible in America Today. Um, again, this is meant to help you explore not just 
not just the text, but um, the question of interpretation and the intersection of this really important religious text in contemporary culture. How is this text used? How do we understand it? How are the differences between how we understand it today in America and how that text has been understood in different places at different times? Um, so these are exciting courses. We're excited to be offering them. Um, if you're in them, I'm hoping that you really enjoy them and definitely give us your feedback. Um, case advisors, professors, we would like to know um, how, those, how those play. Oh, Jill, I think you're muted. We just like tattoo, we just need like a sign, t-shirt, something, you're muted. So, um, and so connected to what we refer to as the core or general education is a program called Flagship. Um, this is probably gonna feel like it's a million years away right now, something that you'll do in the spring semester of your second year. So not this fall, not next spring, not the following fall, but that following spring, either in January or May, in a standalone like three week term, you'll take what we call a high impact class. Um, and uh, these are meant to explore things like identity and culture and how those things intersect. And how do we understand each other across those cultural differences? These classes could be on campus. So in like a traditional kind of what we would say a classroom format, they could be in St. Augustine, but engaged in the community. So working with an organization or a population. They could be um, study abroad, so outside of the US in another country, or study away, so inside the US, but in a different city or state. Um, and so they are just, there's a wide variety of options. You can see our upcoming classes for next year um, that our students who just finished their first year will be engaging in. Uh, so you can get an idea of those what those courses are like, but they are not tied to any major and they're really about this, this experience and this transformation. They're also kind of a bookend to the first year seminar. So if, if first year seminar is meant to introduce you to Flagler, to St. Augustine, and I think in a lot of ways to yourself, um, flagship is meant to draw that connection to the communities and cultures and identities outside of, you, of yourself and your own kind of bubble. Um, so we're really trying to, um, to bookend your core experience of general education with these two types of experiences. You will have lots of information um, about this before it's time to register. You'll register for this experience next spring. So like April of, of next spring, uh, we do, we'll have a course fair. I mean, there's, there'll be lots of opportunities to learn about this beforehand, but we want you to know it's coming. And this is something you should definitely be excited about. Um, for students who are entering with their AA or with lots of, of credit, um, if you have your AA, you're exempt from flagship, um, but you are still, you know, you, you can still participate. Um, I know some students want to finish in two years, and this could be challenging to do in that period of time. Some want and, and plan to stay longer. Um, so this is an option it is required for other students. Um, so stay tuned for, for more information about the flagship experience. So um, what do you have to do to graduate? Um, Dr. Thweet, you want to start with this and sure. is, is needed? So I, I think I will go through all of this that's on the slide, but there are really four things um, that you need to have in your mind. The first is um, you have to declare a major um, and you have to satisfy the requirements for that major. The second thing is you have to satisfy the general education requirements. The third thing is in addition to satisfying all of those requirements, however many cre credit hours those are, you have to complete the magic number of 120 credit hours. Okay, so general education is 45 credit hours. A typical major is about 60. Some of them are shorter. Um, for instance, philosophy and religion is 36 credit hours. So that's you know, quite a bit shorter. 
So 60 plus 45, you guys can do the math there. That is not 120. So you've got some extra room here for a minor, for exploring a variety of intellectual interests if you want. You do not have to declare a minor, um, but you do have to take um, those extra 15 to 18 credit hours um, in order to get to 120 to graduate. And the fourth thing, because I said there were four and I've only listed three, the fourth thing is we want you to attend um, at least 20 co-curricular events. So that's four things, your major, gen ed, 120 credit hours, and 20 co-curriculars, okay? So that's the simple version of the list. All right, so um, a few more details are here on this slide. So number one, we've covered 120. Get that magic number in your head. If you're wondering, by the way, why we require you to be in 15 credit hours per semester, that is five courses, right? Every semester, that's our minimum for full-time enrollment. Do some quick math with me. Four years of college is eight semesters, right? And 15 credit hours for eight semesters is, drum roll, 120. Okay, so 15 credit hours on average over eight semesters gets you to that magic number. Gen ed, you have to complete, your major you have to complete. Please note that um, we only allow two Ds within your major requirements, one D if it's a minor. Look, not everybody has a great semester every single semester, and we know that, okay. Um, but we do limit you on how many footsies <laughs> you can have within your major, okay? Because that's the thing that you're concentrating on that your diploma says to the world, I have expertise in this thing. Um, we want to make sure that when somebody says, I'm a Flagler graduate and I majored in this and I have expertise in this, that that's really true. Um, so we limit how many footsies you can have within your major. Co-curricular events. So I told you when I mentioned this um, earlier that we would come back to it. Um, in addition to your classroom experience, which is important, um, we also, and I hope you've picked up on this in various ways so far, learning happens everywhere and we know that and we encourage that and we want you to have that mindset. Like, yes, you go to class and you sit down and you learn stuff, but you also learn stuff once you stand up and walk out of the classroom. We hope you don't stop learning just because you exited that door. Um, learning takes place everywhere. Learning happens in the D hall. Learning happens in the dorm. Learning happens out in St. Augustine. Learning happens everywhere. And we do structure some of the curriculum in order to emphasize that, like the flagship experience emphasizes that learning takes place everywhere. Um, we also want to carry that through your whole experience through um, encouraging you and requiring you to attend events outside the classroom that are meant to enhance your educational experience. So this is what we mean by co-curricular events. 20 is not a huge number across four years. It breaks down to about three events your first couple of years, two events per semester your last couple of years. And we wanna make sure that the events that you are attending have at least one per year has a diversity component to it. Um, so that we know that we're doing our job in carrying our end of, this is an important value for Flagler College and we're communicating that to you. Co-curricular events can be all sorts of things. Um, theater productions, musical productions, lectures, panels. Um, if you're a communications major, there's a thing called Com Week, which in its own self probably has 20 co-curricular events. Um, so you can like knock out the whole thing in a single week if you're desperate. Um, I wouldn't advise it, but you know, it might be possible. Um, so the idea is, learning happens everywhere. We want you to be learning everywhere. We want you to develop that mindset and that habit. These are all, um, you're going to get lots of, again, another like lots of information coming at you. We have a, a great platform and, and even a phone app um, called Saints Connect that gives you information about what's happening on campus. Um, I'll reiterate what Dr. Thweet said. Co-curriculars, most students don't even like they're they, they'll come to me and they'll be like have I have I done these am I behind and I'm like actually you've done like 15 extras um you you know your faculty will will encourage you to attend something for extra credit or will require you to do something or you'll just go to things that you love 
Um, you know, the career development center uh, that we work with a lot, especially for students that are trying to figure out what to do with that major, um, they host a ton of events, everything from, you know, employer presentations to alumni coming in to, to small group coffee chats to a big career expo. Um, so that's, you know, one, one type of event that I'll sometimes refer students to. Um, SGA meetings, even those can count as, as co-curriculars. So if you are getting out and, and you know, taking advantage of the opportunities on campus, these, these aren't a burden and in fact should be hopefully fun. Um, and I, I think that it, I feel like a lot of students, um, they, you find your, your, your people, you find your, your closest friends, but you also find your passion and your future interest sometimes um, with these, these extracurricular and co-curricular activities. Um, I know Michael was very involved in, I think, Greek life. I think that was one of his passions in college and um, probably some of your best friends. And um, I did model you in, if we have any model you winners out there. Uh, so Dr. Thweet, did, you, were, you were a college athlete as well, weren't you, right? Um, not officially. I was part of the, we, we organized ourselves, women's recreational soccer. And then the year after I graduated, my college got a soccer team. Sad trombone. You played a role with that, so <laughs> still, still kind of found your place. Um, we mentioned, you know, in, I think internships are on here. Uh, some require them, but um, every student can do an internship. The same with, with study abroad. Um, those are open to all students and, and can be, you know, really fantastic opportunities, again, to either help you decide what you want to do or to um, lay a foundation for those future opportunities. Okay. So you can double major, you can major minor, you can double major, double minor, major, double minor. Did I miss, miss any combinations? Triple minor sometimes. Triple minor, yeah. Um, and you know, th these are these are very common. Um, you know, and there's lots of different ways to think about these these major and minor combinations. Um, I mentioned the Career Development Center earlier. They're a, another great resource for this as well. Um, sometimes there's some um, complementary majors and minors, but also thinking outside the box. So if you are in a major that maybe is very quantitative or experiential, um, may, maybe you want to, to add on to your writing skills. So a creative writing minor or an English minor could be helpful. Um, maybe you want to add some computer skills. Maybe there's something you just love and you're just interested in and, and, and curious about, um, that's a, you know, add that on as well. And where I think we can be particularly helpful is making sure that you can do those combination of things in the time that you have here at Flagler. Um, some things take longer. Um, it's not to say you can't, you can't stay at Flagler for longer than four years, you can. Um, if it's money and time and we wanna be respectful of your plans, but we want to make sure that you you're not surprised so that if you just want to do something that you know how long it will take and what it will look like and what the requirements are. Um, do you want to add anything to, to that? Um, just maybe a, a throwback to the um, discovery program and, you know, just sort of the general thing of being undecided or or if you're a person who comes in and you're like, I know exactly what I want to do. And then you get halfway through your first semester and you're like, you know what, all my life, I thought I wanted to major in political science, but now that I'm here, I just, I, I freaking hate it. Um, which is a conversation I had a couple of years ago with a first year student who just came in on fire, um, just knowing exactly what she wanted and then just, just really hated it. <laughs> I walked into my office and was just, in the middle of an existential crisis. And I said, well, okay, let's talk about, let's talk about what you don't hate. Let's talk about what you're loving. Let's talk, of, I mean, you can change your major, you know that, right? And it was just almost like she needed to hear the words, it's okay to change your major. So I'm gonna say those words to all of you now, it's okay <laughs> to change your major. A lot of people do. Um, and it doesn't, um, it doesn't derail you. Um, this is part of the magic of the way the, the gen ed program works is that you're working on 
all of those requirements and using those to discover the things that you love. And if you need to switch gears in this first year, that is okay. We got your back on that. We, we have our eye on that. Um, and we will help you rearrange that for your plan if we need to. Um, it'll be fine. <laughs> I came in when I was a college student as an English major, chemistry, English chemistry double major. That was just nuts. Um, and thankfully in my first year, whoever was advising me um, said, you realize it's gonna take you six years, right? And I said, oh, in that case, maybe not. <laughs> and I stuck with English um, rather than the chemistry. Um, but I changed careers like midstream. Yeah, I mean, Michael, did you, how did you, you, did you start out in criminology? I think mean, that was your, your area of focus. I actually did not. I was a poli-sci major and took a couple poli-sci classes and ended up hating poli-sci. So um, I actually took a crim class and this professor was great. Um, the crim department was amazing and just decided to change my major to criminology. Not using my degree though, you know, ended up in higher education, so. <laughs> Well, I think you are, but using your degree can, can look like a lot of things, right? But I, but exactly what, you know, Michael mentioned, that's sometimes what happens. You know, students sort of start out in one direction, aren't loving it, take a class in this other thing, and it just really excites them. So um, be open to those experiences. And yeah, I see, um, you know, Dean Stevenson is, is kind of reiterating in the chat here. You can post questions in the chat in the Q&A function, um, and you can also email us afterward. Um, if we if we don't have time to get to your question. All right, so all the resources that are available to you. So academic support resources, um, us obviously, uh, your, your faculty. So uh, that's going to be a, a lot of, if you come to us and you say, I'm struggling in this class or that class, we're going to say, have you, have you talked to your professor? Have you gone to office hours? Um, and then you know, the Learning Resource Center is available, free tutoring, math and writing, and a whole range of other subjects. Um, for students who have uh, a disability, if you had an IEP or a 504 plan, if those sound familiar to you, um, we definitely encourage you to connect with the Disability Resource Center, get information, get registered with them, learn about accommodations. Um, the Registrar's Office, they keep all of your official records. They help with class registration. Uh, you'll get to know them. Every student connects with the registrar's office at least once, you know, kind of in person. Uh, but you know, they'll they'll be helpful to you. And then our office, of course, uh, the case office and the Proctor Library. So our office is in the Proctor Library. So you'll you can connect with and the Disability Resource Center is also in the Proctor Library. Um, and the librarians are incredibly helpful, not just with research. I mean, I think that they are, they're great with, with research and writing papers and um, obviously accessing resources, but they also are good people to, to they can answer a wide array of questions. If you're lost, if you need something, um, if you're not sure where a place is, I mean, they're, they're just incredibly kind, helpful generous people who love students. So don't hesitate to, to ask a librarian. And they have great work study students as well who can help. And then human resources, the people that will help you. Um, Michael and, and Dr. Thweet, do y'all wanna chime in on all of the people that, that will be on uh, the support teams for our students? Um, yeah, I'll take the first two at least um, and say a bit about first year seminar. Um, so. Every, every incoming first year student, um, unless you're unless you're a transfer student, um, in which case you're 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 slightly different. But if you're an incoming first year student, even if you're coming in with um, even a substantial number of transfer credit hours, um, you will be enrolled in first year seminars. So that is just going to be on that fall schedule for you. FYS 152. Um, Lots of students have questions about what that is. And one way to describe it is to say, um, first year seminar is meant to function as an introduction to Flagler College, an introduction to college sort of generally. What does it mean to be in college? And what do we mean when we say this phrase college level work? Um, so 
it's a place where you learn about Flagler, you learn about um, transitions to college academically, um, you learn about um, sort of, we, we, we structure it so that we encourage a little bit of introspection for you. So as Jill said earlier, um, if first year seminar is a class about Flagler, St. Augustine and yourself, um, flagship is sort of you bookending that coming full circle and taking yourself out there into the world to do all that wonderful learning as the capstone experience. And we do think of first year seminar that way, that it's a course about St. Augustine and Flagler and you as a student, as a Flagler student. So your first year seminar professor is a resource for you um, in a very particular way. This is a faculty member or a staff person who has absolutely out of the goodness of their wonderful heart volunteered to spend that time with you two times a week or three times a week through that first semester with you to be a resource, to answer your questions, to walk you through some of those transitions that take you by surprise, whether that's academically or socially or financially or whatever. Um, that's what first year seminar is meant to do. Um, so it's an extended orientation to Flagler in some ways. Um, it's a welcome to college course in some ways, um, but the person in charge of it, whoever they are, is somebody who has chosen to do that. And they've chosen to do that because they love working with first year students. Um, it's, a, it's a fabulous experience every semester. In addition to the professor for a first year seminar, you have a peer mentor. So that's a student who probably is a rising second year student. So they've just walked this path that you're starting down. Um, they remember the things that were hard. They remember the solutions they came up with. They remember the coping strategies that worked. Um, and they're an additional resource for you as a peer. Um, so maybe the things you don't want to say to your professor, you can say to the peer mentor, um, but they will be attached to your first year seminar class. You'll see them at least once a week. Um, they'll be available to you via email. They'll be ready to hang out with you if you need somebody to lunch with in the D hall and you don't want to eat by yourself. I mean, they're there for whatever you need. Um, your resident advisor, community advisor, and resident director, all three of these people um, are your resources for anything connected to residence life. So your room, your roommate, um, if you're having issues um, logistically, or if you're having issues just connecting with this roommate, or if this roommate's just being bizarre in ways you can't figure out and you need a little help mediating, um, you've got three layers of people there um, who can help you out with that. And I'll say that the most of the struggles and, and issues that we see students experience in the first semester, and every student will experience some kind of, of bump in the road. The academic stuff is often the, the easier transition. And when we see academic issues popping up, there's other stuff going on. And I think that the transition, um, the challenges of the transition are um, often outside the classroom, but impact the classroom. Um, so roommate issues, I mean, there's a whole list of, of people in here that can help you with, with a lot of things. Um, you know, for those of you living on campus, there's help with that. Um, athletes, you know, you have a, a support system there. This is not an all-inclusive list. And a lot of times, our, what we do a lot of is, is referrals to other offices. You come to us, I've got a problem, I'm struggling with this. It's impacting my ability to go to class. And we'll say, hey, have you talked to your RA or have you, have you met with the counselor? Um, you know, have you, um, have, you, have you talked to your professor? So uh, there's a lot of people here that are committed to, to helping you. I know we're coming up on the end of our time. So, uh, these are just some 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 key dates. Um, I think you'll get you'll get reminders about these things in the fall. But one of the things I want to emphasize is something we said at the beginning: don't change your schedule ever, as long as you're at Flagler <laughs> any semester without talking with someone. Um, sometimes you might be uh, impacting your your timeline, your your ability to graduate, your grades, your financial aid status without realizing it. And we know it's it's there's a lot to keep track of and that's why we're here to help. Um, but there are some things like the date at which you can't 
change your schedule, a date at which if you um, withdraw from a class, it's automatically an F. These are things we'll remind you of, but um, this is just a, a big flag of like, hey, don't change your schedule before you talk to someone. And yeah, we're here for you. So maybe any final thoughts, words of, of wisdom? Um, I know we've got one question uh, hanging there, but yeah, what, what, what would y'all add uh, to sum up for today? I think I'm just going to point to um, Sarah's genius in making this bright red large font down here underlined and like bolded. Please check your email. <laughs> Um, all those reminders that Jill just mentioned are going to come through your email. So they're not going to do you any good unless you've um, formed that habit of checking your Flagler email daily. Michael, you're the closest of all of us to the college experience. He's, he's, our, he's, he's not that far removed. I uh, just recently finished his master's degree. What advice would you give students kind of entering college? Um, I, I would definitely say don't forget that your academic advisors are here for you for that support. We often forget that aspect of like, they're paid professionals to be here for the students. And we forget to use that resource a lot. I would say for myself, like I forgot to use that resource as a first year student, but becoming like, as I progressed through college, like my sophomore year of college, I used my advisor a lot. And that support actually pushed me to go outside of my comfort zone and join different organizations, actually made my grades. Like my first year of undergrad was, I did terrible. And my second year, I started making good grades just because I was pushed by this specific person. And for some students, we forget to use that aspect of um, what 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 is given to us. And I would say, please don't forget to come to your academic advisor, talk to us. Um, we're here to support you, guide you throughout this process. Even though we're not going to be your advisors the second year, please just come by. We want to know what's going on in your life so we can use that to support you guys because you might be going through a tough time, but we we're we never know about that you're giving it to yourself and it's affecting how you approach college life and your grades, but always come talk to us. We're here to support you. We're here to guide you and we're here if you need anything. Yeah, I 100%. Um, yeah, we've got your back. We're part of your team and we want to get to know you. We really, I mean, so like reach out, say hi, come by. Um, and we've got, we've got one question Kind of hanging there that that I'll um, I'll answer, but you know just kind of a last call. If y'all have questions, please put them in the in the Q and A or the chat. And you're welcome to email us if you've got your um, if you know who your advisor is, you can um, email them directly, or you can always contact us at case at flagler.edu, um, and we'll we'll see you at Welcome Week in August. I mean you'll you don't worry you'll you'll be interacting with us a lot. We'll we'll kind of be in your lives uh, this summer and throughout your time at Flagler. Um, but we have a question about, about textbooks. So great question. Um, so once you have your class schedule, um, you can then sort of at some point find out what your textbooks are. You'll get information from the Flagler College Bookstore before the start of the fall semester. And they will give you information about how to find what books you need. Um, you can order them, reserve them from the Flagler College Bookstore. Um, for first year students, I often su you know, suggest using the bookstore in your first year or your first semester because they do make it pretty easy. Um, they, you can reserve them, you can let them know if you want rentals, if you want um, used books. And, and thank you, I see information went out last week from Business Services about that. Um, and when you get here, you can just go by and pick them up. And sometimes they even put a little goodie in there for you. Um, you if you change your schedule, you can return or exchange your books. Um, and there's also usually a little grace period. So if you don't have your books on the first day, that's fine. Um, there's, you know, I would say by the end of the first week of classes, by the, you know, you'll have a chance to go to classes a couple of times. Um, but it is important that you have those materials. Also, for textbooks that have, um, like for statistics, where there's, you know, like an electronic component to that textbook material, um, you can use the bookstore to help troubleshoot. Like if you're having trouble, your link isn't working, you don't have access to all the materials for that course.
course that you need, um, go to the bookstore and ask them to help you troubleshoot that. Um, that's more of a textbook problem than it is like a professor problem. The professor is not going to know like how to troubleshoot whether or not a link is working, but the bookstore will be able to help you with that. Um, and that sometimes, I don't, sometimes that happens. So that's um, a common enough um, question that I field as the case advisor. And I don't know anything about that technology stuff. Um, I'm too old for that. Um, but the bookstore will be able to help you troubleshoot that if you have an issue. All right. Well, please don't hesitate to, to reach out to us. You know, we're really grateful to y'all for taking the time to join us today, maybe during your lunch hour or during your summer break. Um, we are here if you need us one-on-one, -on -one, via email, come to future events, however you want to connect with us. Um, and thanks, Dr. Thweet and Mr. Morty. And y'all will meet Miss Upchurch if you haven't already, uh, certainly when you get here this fall. So enjoy the rest of your summer and we will see you in just a few weeks here on campus. Bye everyone.